Hi, it's James here from Optimal Dental Health and I'm here with Faye from a functional gut clinic. And the gut is actually in the mouth, it starts in the mouth. So wherever you put in the mouth, it gets down into your gut. So we're talking to Faye today about common signs and symptoms that you might see in your mouth. So what are the most common things people come to see you? Um, so in terms of what we do here, um, the main test is probably esophageal physiology testing. So what I mean by that is we check for swallowing um, and then combined with that, we often do reflux testing. So patients will often present to us with things like sour taste, um, heartburn, sometimes cough, depending on how far up the reflux comes. Um, a few people actually come to us sort of being prompted by their dentist yeah. and they can get signs of erosion in the back of the mouth, yeah. um, indicative of reflux, yeah. which is why they come to us. What about bad breath? Do you get people to come in and go? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we do get bad breath as well. And it's nothing to be ashamed about, yeah. especially, you know, we're here to help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing for us is that we see things in the mouth first and then we start putting the symptoms together. So it might be, as you said, uh, erosion, which a lot of people notice their teeth are thinner or yellow or, or sensitive, so they can't have cold drinks in the fridge. And bad breath as well, because uh, initially when you go to the dentist, you think, oh, we just need to brush better and floss better. Actually, bad breath comes from the stomach and reflux and acid ingestion. So, what we can look at in the SIBO breath test. Can you tell me a little bit about the SIBO yeah, breath of test, how it works. Essentially, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, so, what we mean by that is most of the bacteria within our gut should be confined to the large bowel. Um, but for some reason, it can be a combination of things, sort of long term PPI use, um, prior food poisoning, or for some reason, there's just an imbalance in the gut bacteria. Um, the bacteria can grow from the large bowel into the small bowel um, and start to cause sort of early fermentation of certain foods and then with this comes a certain set of um, symptoms. Uh, so it can be anything from bloating to, to reflux, um, altered bowel habit, just signs that food isn't being fermented as it should essentially. And a lot of GPs will put something straight on PPI and they think, okay, you've got heartburn. Yeah. PPI, that's it. But actually, we want the stomach acid, don't we, for other things? Exactly. We have it for a reason. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is good to get to the underlying, the root cause, if you will, of why you're experiencing the reflux to start with before. And what was the test that you do then to do that before they do PPIs? So that would be the esophageal physiology okay. testing. Um, so it would involve a 24-hour pH study. So it does involve a very small tube that we pass through the nose um, directly into the stomach. With this test, we could see how far up the reflux comes, whether it's within the normal ranges, essentially. Excellent. So if you're feeling any bloating, if you've got any acid reflux, if you are finding your teeth are sensitive, you've got bad breath, come to the dentist and then come and see these guys, the functional gut clinic, and get it checked out before it starts to cause problems dissolving the teeth and obviously dissolving the bowels, which you don't want to do either. So.